Fear and Phobia Fridays. So the number, um, this is a series about the top 200 phobias in the world and how hip therapy such as hypnotherapy can cure them. So number four is agoraphobia. It looks like it's written agoraphobia, but it's agoraphobia, that's how we pronounce it. Um, it's a fear of open or crowded spaces. So agoraphobia is the irrational fear of having a panic attack or anxiety attack in a place that may be difficult to escape from. With the trouble with agoraphobia, there's a lot of myths about it. So I'm going to just explain some of these myths and dispel them for you. So people with the fear of open spaces always remain housebound. Again, not true. Many sufferers of agoraphobia actually prefer crowded spaces than being left alone. A majority of these patients may have milder symptoms of agoraphobia. If one is housebound for months or years, then this agoraphobia can be classified as being extreme. Agoraphobia is only the fear of crowded spaces. Again, as mentioned above, some individuals are known to fear crowds, but others prefer them. Fear of enclosed spaces is not agoraphobia, only claustrophobia, the fear of enclosed spaces. Again, many individuals with agoraphobia are also known to fear enclosed spaces, but they may have other fear symptoms as well, which makes it worse. Agoraphobia is the fear of open spaces in public places. Again, more than the fear of being in an open space. The phobia tends to fear a symptom attack, a rush of symptoms and sensations that she or he is unable to deal with. Agoraphobia is always a fear of a panic attack. Again, agoraphobia is not just panic that one fears for several um, other symptoms. For example, a person might feel nauseated in a crowded space and fear not being able to reach the bathroom in time to throw up. Thus, the sufferer might learn to feel or expect to feel something disturbing. So the causes of agoraphobia or the fear of open crowded spaces. So with some of the other things we've mentioned about our fears and phobias to do with spiders and so forth, there is no single cause for the fear of open or crowded spaces. Researchers believe that a number of physical and psychological factors may be responsible for this phobia. Majority of cases which have been done by scientists and psychologists is an underlying panic disorder may be responsible for agoraphobia. A panic disorder is characterised by an intense and a rational fear that can cause sufferers to lose control, cry, shake and have thoughts about dying in his or her mind. The sufferer then links the attack to situations and then tries to avoid these situations completely. Now remember this because I'm going to explain about how it works with the cure of reframing the trigger. A research is also suggesting possible links between long-term tranquilizer or sleeping pill uses with agoraphobia. Individuals with difficulty of spatial orientation or balance are known to experience extreme fear of crowded or open spaces. And then this is where um, many different symptoms or many ideas could be linked to this. So a history of alcohol or drug abuse. Traumatic childhood experiences. Recent life changes such as death, divorce, relationship difficulties. And then for PTSD, war, explosion, earthquakes can bring the fear of open or crowded spaces. So we know, with example, um, if some people do not want to be enclosed in certain places. Um, it's actually one of the worst things to do for children is if children are locked in a cupboard or locked in a room. And if the room is very small, this can actually be something linked to the beginnings of agoraphobia. So symptoms of agoraphobia, there are physical and psychological symptoms. So I'm going to give you some of the physical symptoms. Hyperventilating, fear, feeling of choking or difficulty swallowing, sweating, shaking and trembling, nausea and dizziness. Psychological symptoms is the fear of losing control or going crazy, the fear of dying, feeling detached from oneself, feelings of depression, dread or anxiety, or having low confidence or lower self-esteem. So the treatment for agoraphobia if it's left on, it should be always treated early on. And if it's left untreated, it'll take more serious form and even make the sufferer depressed or suicidal. Sometimes we can actually find agoraphobia is actually some children have a fear of being in open spaces or enclosed spaces. But then the enclosed spaces is claustrophobia. So again, very interesting. Because if you think about it, that's why children probably when they leave this classroom love being in the playground because it's more open. Hence the importance of that. So self-help techniques for dealing with panic systems is breathing techniques, so um, breath work, or in, in the Indian culture we call it pranayama, and the counting to this, to the words to relax and calm the body down. Because if we can calm the body down, we calm, calm the nervous system, and we can, uh, calm the, the actual ignition to a trigger, which then causes the panic. 
slowly exposing oneself to one's fears and writing down things that one makes fearful. This might turn out to be difficult in the beginning, but gradually can overcome the fear of crowded or open spaces. But them self-help methods of people who've got extreme agoraphobia would not work. So we have to look at hypnotherapy and to find out the root cause and control the symptoms. So the root cause will be the link to a triggering. The triggering will have to be reframed so that the person doesn't have the symptoms of what we've mentioned before. And you may hear different ways of doing this. So using CBT, cognitive behavior, guided imagery, counseling, talk therapy, and group therapy. But all these stem from the original techniques used in hypnosis. If anybody is interested in trying to get over this fear of agoraphobia, please do not hesitate to message me on all social media channels I'm on. And then obviously I can contact you and we can set up a consultation.